Hi guys, so it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but I thought I'd just get back into it. Uh, this video's title is how to tell if someone is on steroids or not. And what I'm going to do in this video is debunk some of the most common ways that you'll be able to tell if someone is actually using. First and foremost, the purpose of this video isn't to out anyone specifically. We're just looking to cut through some of the bullshit you may see on social media as to people who claim to be natural, but um, they deny it. So the only real foolproof method uh, to tell if someone is on steroids or not is to do a drugs test. Um, but there are some signs both in their body mass, body composition, and ultimately the look of the tissue as to whether someone is natural or not. In terms of genetics, there are absolute genetic anomalies in bodybuilding. The likes of Kai Green and Ronnie Coleman turned pro whilst they were still natural but then they packed on another 80 pounds of tissue to get to an Olympian uh, standard physique. Those are your outliers in this case. The volume of tissue you can actually hold on your frame naturally very significantly person to person as your bone structure, things like your wrist, like mine's tiny, um, and the density of your frame, uh, metabolic rate and fiber composition all play a very large part. But for 99.9% .9 of individuals, just by looking at them, uh, their fat-free volume of, of body mass uh, and the rate of gain past a certain point of training, uh, you can tell those individuals that do use anabolics. The Birkin model outlines what the maximum body weight an individual could be at a shredded or stage lean condition whilst natural. The equation is as follows. I'm going to drop it there. The positives of this model are that it's pretty simple and the equation takes literally like 30 seconds to do uh, and find a ballpark figure of how much muscle you could potentially look to gain naturally. For me the limitations are that it doesn't take into account things like your bone structure and I would also say that the estimation is on the low side of the genetic potential of most individuals. So Casey Butt's model takes it a little further. He includes a wrist and ankle measurement into the max body weight calculation to account for bone structure, but also provides formulas to predict the maximum muscle measurements and a formula to predict your max total body weight at any different body fat level, as opposed to just stage lean condition. Um, so the formula for that is well here. I've also attached a calculator for you to run the formula yourself in the description. Um, and this model for me is a little more likely because it actually takes into account bone structure. Uh, if you have a narrow bone structure, you'll be able to carry less tissue and vice versa. So the third uh, version is the fat-free mass index or FFMI. Um, it's intriguing because it creates a range for any height, weight and body fat percentage and determines a scope of how likely steroid use is or not on a very broad spectrum. It's arguably the most commonly used form of most YouTubers that do natty or not videos to ascertain whether someone is actually natural or not. Uh, but again, there can be outliers. So FFMI is calculated as follows, and I'll drop the equation there again. So in terms of the interpretation, anything below say 20, you're just a normal individual, never really been to the gym. Anything above 21 is when people are starting to notice that you use weight. Anything above 22, you're genetically pretty damn good. Uh, 23 to 25 is you have really good genetics. And some people may think that you may start to be using, but most people will just go, that's a guy that goes to the gym a shit ton. Uh, anything above 26, you're most likely using some form of anabolics. But there's still cases where you genetically may just be superior. And anything like above that, you are most certainly using in most cases. It's kind of interesting here is that if you compare the Birkin model with FFMI, the top ranges of the Birkin model uh, give you an FFMI of sub 25. So realistically, those are all physiques that are, are substantially achievable naturally. Um, and as I thought, it's slightly no, low balls to your natural potential. There will be outliers with a 26 plus FFMI who are natural, but on the most part, I think it can be taken as kind of good guidance. So if we take like the current Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry, for example, he weighs 240 pounds on stage and is five foot seven. It gives him an FFMI of 36. As a top level Olympian, you expect him to be using something, but you can clearly see that that's very far over the natural limit for his structure. Most people can think they can tell if someone is using anabolics just by looking at them. This may or may not be the case. 
Of course, at the extreme level, there are telltale signs, things like distension, uh, but I guarantee you'll walk, come across people on a daily basis that do use anabolics and you would never be able to tell that they do. Um, there are some common side effects, however, and muscular adaptations with those that do use anabolics that can be taken as that that person is more likely to have used them. So the common side effects attributed with using steroids are acne, specifically on the shoulders and back, gynecomastia, which is like the overdevelopment of um, breast tissue in males, and then also rapid weight and muscle gain, uh, in particular in someone who's been training for a long period and got close to the genetic potential. In terms of muscle belly growth, uh, you're likely to see the largest variance in places with a high concentration of something called androgen receptors. Generally, the clearest difference between users of anabolics and not uh, can be seen through the deltoids, traps, arms and chest where there's a higher concentration of androgen receptors. Uh, and you kind of get a 3D look to the muscle, uh, which can be a pretty good giveaway. However, I would always suggest that you take that with a caveat because someone may just have really good genetics in a certain body part. Anyways, I hope you guys have found this kind of informative. Uh, any questions, ask on the forum on my site or publish a comment below.